Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Cantliff. I'm the County Extension Director for St. John's County. And we're here today in St. John's County at the Jones Farm, Riverdale Farm. And we're gonna to talk to Brian Jones about his irrigation system. Farming in this area has been commercially done, certainly before 1888, but it's then that Flagler with his hotels brought his cousin in from New York name of Hastings to start farming in the area. A lot of the crops that they grew, including potatoes as we'll see today, were grown at that time for shipment up north. The irrigation systems that were used then are similarly used today by many of our growers, not just here in the St. Johns County area, but in a lot of our vegetable farming areas throughout the state. And I think what I'd like to do is ask Brian some questions about how he irrigates with what we call traditional seep irrigation and what potatoes require and so forth to get them through a whole cropping season. Brian, good to see you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, what we've got here uh, is a water fur that we use. Um, on our ground, we have them every 60 feet. And this is the traditional seep irrigation as you were talking about. What we have is a one inch line with a valve and we let it pump. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, six to eight weeks at times when we're growing our crop. And what traditionally happens is the water will run down to the other end. There's a drain pipe, goes into the drain canal and runs on out. Uh, it takes about a week, sometimes two, depending on the ground, it could take longer for the moisture to start what we call seeping out into the bed. Uh, and it does take a, a pretty good amount of time for it to meet up in the middle of that bed. And it requires then quite a bit of water to run this, this outfit. It's an enormous amount of water. It sure is. Uh, you're talking a, a seven horse pump, pumping hundreds of gallons a minute. And most of it, if not the large majority, runs on out. Wow. It goes to the other end and, and disappears. And, and what I'll show you in a few minutes is something new that we're trying. Well, I'm pretty excited about seeing that. So let's get over there and look at it. Absolutely. So this is the uh, project site that we've got with the seep irrigation. All right, and we were talking about water use over here and the fact that the, the, um, the sub-seepage system has been used for maybe 125 years in this area and other parts of Florida. Uses a lot of water. What's, what's the main difference between this system you've described here and the new system that you're putting in here? So what we've got um, is some 7 8 uh, 15 mil, uh, tape. Um, it's got slits in it about every 12 inches. Um, it's 14 inches below the alley. Um, so it's right above the hard pan in this particular area. Um, and this situation here, we've got two runs of tape um, per bed. So every 60 feet, uh, there's two. They're about 26 feet apart. So you mentioned that, that on this system, it, it's relatively easy to install, but is it an invasive installation where you gotta dig the soil up or how do you do it? It's, it's really simple. Uh, we have a shank or a ripper as some growers refer to them that will run in the alley that we're gonna be installing the tape. We'll run that 25 to 30 inches down uh -huh. to check for any stump um, and dig those up. That, once we've done that, we'll come back uh, with a tape installer. It's another simple shank that has a roll of tape and it installs it right behind a tractor. We can do a 30 acre field, install the tape in just a few hours. Wow. Once all the roots and stumps have been dug up, uh, it's very quick. All right, and how much, how much water do you use for irrigation? How much are you putting in here on a, on a daily basis? Do you run it like this all day long? Okay, uh, there's a, a huge difference there. Um, we've got actually two different types of tape uh, in this 30 acre block. Uh, we've got high flow uh, and we've got low flow. The high flow is 0.45 gallons per minute per 100 feet. Uh, and the low flow is 0.34 gallons per minute per 100 feet. Uh, and what we're able to do with this is run it for eight hours at a time, uh, just a couple times a week, versus conventional irrigation, uh, which you will see is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, six to eight weeks at a time. Uh, it's a huge savings. We, we've got flow meters installed. Uh, this is the first year that we'll be able to truly compare the two fields. 
and, and find out exactly how much we're saving. We know uh, based on our first test block uh, that it's probably going to be about 70% saving. And of course, I'm looking over here to my right and I see the St. Johns River right in front of me. And so this new system then, no water gets out. You're able to control completely water management in the field. And how do you think that affects nutrient and nutrient movement out of this area? We have zero loss. There is no water leaving this farm. Um, every bit of it is staying inside the bed, which is where we want it to be. Uh, the moisture is coming up evenly. Uh, given the plants the right amount, uh, they reach down the roots grow and grow and are able to grab more nutrients uh, that they traditionally were not able to uh, because the moisture table was not even. Uh, before, uh, the outside of it would get probably more nutrients. Mm -hmm. It would perform better mm -hmm. uh, closer to the water fur uh, as there's more moisture there. The center of the bed is a little bit weaker. Here, you're going to get a uni more uniform uh, production out of it uh, because the, all the nutrients are available and every plant has equal opportunity to grab them. Uh, it's very cost effective for the farmer. Um, it's running based on the valve. We have hydraulic and electric yeah. valves, yeah. Um, about three to four hundred dollars an acre. Wow. So, but your savings in power, water use, it's going to be significant. On top of that, your yield is going to go through the roof. So you're going to pay for it real quick. Now, is it like traditional drip irrigation where every year you replace this, or how long do you think it'll no, stay? No, it's the... not. Uh, what we've got, being that it's 14 inches underground, you don't have to replace it every year. Uh, and that was the idea of it. We wanted to put it in and leave it. So we're hoping, we haven't done it yet, we're hoping to get 10, 12, 15 years out of it. Wow. What we've got um, is an injection system that is feeding chemical into the tape while the pump is running to clean those emitters to allow that line to stay as clean as possible and last as long as it can. But the highly significant thing is the sustainability of the system, the Absolutely. water use efficiency, the fertilizer use efficiency, cutting costs, improving yield and quality. What we're able to do is maximize yield and lower drastically our impact on what we're doing. And the electronics on, on trying to determine water use and what's in the field, is, is that difficult for a, a grower to go ahead and install, understand, use, adapt to? You know, it's, to? it's really not. We've got some great technology out here today. Okay. It's a timer box uh, that can control multiple zones, uh, which is what we have out here. We want to be able to um, customize each field, as I was saying. Uh, so what we've done is broken it up into different beds. Mm -hmm. um, the first three beds are different than the next 10. The next five are different than the, the remainder. So what we do is have different zones, just like in your yard. So we can run the first three beds for eight hours. The next 10 might only need to be for three hours. Um, so every bit is a little bit different, but it's a simple time uh, set up. Once you get it set up, you let it run and it does the work for you. On top of that, we've got some moisture sensors um, that is tied in wirelessly uh, to my phone as well as to the laptop. So we can measure the moisture level in the ground and justify where we're at, see what the plants are telling us. Uh, eventually, we would like to be fully automated. And what that'll allow us to do is those sensors will tell us when to turn the water on, when to turn the water off. And it can do that by bed, by zone, or by field. The nice thing is, is each bed is different. And we can really zero in on what that water is in each bed. And really, as I'm emphasizing, maximize the yield per acre that we possibly can. You're gonna save millions of gallons of water across the board. There's zero water going into the St. Johns River and I, it's a wonderful thing. For more information, we would love you to contact our University of Florida IFAS Extension Office in your local county.